If you look around the internet, there are endless videos kind of teaching you how to have the perfect riding body position. And we know that because we've made a few. And whilst all of these are absolute bangers, it can be pretty tricky to remember all the cues that we give you, given when you're out on the trail, there's rocks, roots, and God knows what else strewn about the place. So today, I've got three cues to help you remember to get straight to the point. So first off, let's take a look at what we're aiming for. The common terminology out there is the attack position. That's slightly more aggressive riding stance you take when the trail gets a bit wilder and a little bit rougher, and you just gotta be on it that little bit more. You're in the right position to see the trail ahead, absorb any impacts, and move your bike around should you need to. So what should the attack position look like? Well, here's a quick run through. From the ground up, we've got dipped heels, a slight bend in the knee, we're hinged at the hips, our core is engaged, arms are slightly bent, elbows are up, and our head is up with our eyes looking nice and far down the trail. That's a lot to take on then, especially when you're out riding on the trail, but fear not, I've boiled it down to the three key points to help you perfect that attack position. Now you don't want to start with bad foundation, so that's why we're starting at the bottom. Dropping your heels, of course. Now dropping your heels is going to allow you to rail turns faster, hit things with more confidence, and have more control over rougher ground. Dropping your heels, well, it lowers your center of gravity and puts more of your body weight down into the center of the bike also. This in turn then is going to put more force through the tires, giving you better grip and turns off camber, and just generally when riding or when things get aggressive. As a bonus, you're also going to get a better grip or purchase between shoe and pedal as well. So flat pedal riders, take note there. So how do we actually check in on this out on the trail? Well, just every now and again, try and consciously sort of remind yourself, are my heels dipped enough? Do I feel my feet jumping or skipping about? If you do, then it's probably because your heels aren't dipped enough. So it's just kind of a good mental reminder. Moving on up then. Let's talk about arms. Now, elbows out. We're not looking to have them sort of out like big old chicken wings, merely up, elevated, and in the correct position that we can absorb impacts, but also have a nice sturdy platform to control our bike. Think about it like this. When you're doing a press-up, if you tuck your elbows in, all right, that can make you nice and strong from a physical activity point of view, but it's harder to control a bike. If you're tucked in like this, well, T-Rex ain't gonna do much for you. You want those elbows out, you wanna be nice and high up on the bike, you obviously do want a slight bend in them, but they're gonna be nice and strong. So that way, like I said, you can absorb impacts. You can move the bike easily from left to right. If your elbows are tucked in like this on a bike, well, it's kind of hard to do anything. Like, just kind of... So what about cues then? Well, like I said, if you find yourself in this position, elbows are really dropped. You're not gonna be able to absorb impacts. You're gonna get weak arms. You're gonna to struggle to muscle the bike around. Just kind of take note when you're on the trail, stand up or sit up nice and high. Just think about where that elbow position is, how those arms look. And also you are kind of, you'll get the cues essentially from when you're riding, when you're hitting lots of bumps. If you're here and you're just sort of front end is slowly dropping further and further, you're finding it harder and harder. And you know, you're almost chest bouncing off the stem. Then you know that that's a point that them elbows, they need to come up and out of the touch and really embrace impacts and looking ahead. Last, but by no means least then, let's take a look at how to look. It's natural to fixate on the awkward, tricky parts of the trail coming up. And before you know it, you're looking just ahead of your front wheel. The quicker you start going, then the further ahead and the further up you're gonna need to look. If you're going really slow, you can kind of get away with looking at the first immediate couple of meters because it's gonna be very slow. You need to focus really hard because often if you're going that slow, the trail might be really tech, it might be really steep. So you need to put all of your energy focusing into what's coming up. Once it gets really quick, you need to start looking sort of maybe eight, nine, 10 further afield. That way you're able to process what's coming up by the time it gets to you. It does feel a little unnatural at first, but with time it does take practice. If it does feel like you're always fighting the trail and you're never really getting any flow, then this could be a great reason why, because you're not really focusing on the trail at hand and what's coming up. You're constantly, like I said, playing that short game, if you like, rather than looking ahead at the long game. Over there. Another great reason then why you want to have your head up looking ahead. So it's not just your eyes, it's your whole head as well. Imagine if you're down like this, 
you're very arched in your back, you're gonna be round shouldered. As soon as you bring that up, notice as my head comes up, I'm gonna be opening up my chest, it's gonna be easier to breathe. That attack stance, that wider sort of opening of the shoulders increases the stability on the bars, the strength, and in turn obviously does allow me to look down the trails. That way I can pick better lines also. It really is a quite a knock-on effect. But that's it, that's my sort of three cues to nailing the attack position. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you a bit of an attack position kind of aficionado or do you kind of forget what to do sometimes? Let me know, maybe we can help you out. But for me, from Phoenix for now, I'll see you later.